Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Pence. Um, when we think about 2020, some common words we might use to describe uh, would be unprecedented, uncertain, change, uh, and waiting. And waiting is certainly something that TJ and Karen mentioned earlier. Uh, Psalm 29.10 says, the Lord sits enthroned as king forever. Um, this has been a verse that we've repeated as a family this year, uh, reminding ourselves that he is sovereign, that he never changes. He keeps his promises and that he is orchestrating every aspect of our lives. Uh, our family has been waiting to adopt for a little over three years. Um, and even with the three little boys that have just been recently placed in our home, uh, there is still a long, uncertain road ahead. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Man cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. We don't know what God has for us tomorrow, uh, but we can be sure that in the waiting, He will accomplish His purposes for His glory and our good. Adopting children is something that's been on Christina and my's hearts uh, from before we were married. Uh, we started this particular journey a little over three years ago, working with the county of San Bernardino to adopt right here in our backyard. We checked off all the back boxes for paperwork, classes, more paperwork, and a thorough inspection of our home, our background, and our parenting practices. We were even told at the time that we should expect a, a placement very soon. Um, even within that first year. So we were excited, we rushed to put the room together, bought a bunch of things, and then we waited. Each month I emailed or called to ask for updates, and most of the time uh, I, I was informed that we had been considered, uh, but not actually matched. We prayed, we cried, we lamented. Why, why did God make us this way? Why did he put this burden on our hearts to adopt, um, but delay to fulfill it? Uh, after another disappointing call um, about two months ago, uh, we were left on the floor in tears, um, wondering if we would ever, ever be matched, um, wondering if God had closed the door and this was not, that, that we would have to go in a different direction. But God was about to demonstrate that he is the unchallenged authority of the universe and that his plan and timing are perfect. In the midst of our longing and pain, God was working. God heard our prayers and the prayers of many of you who have been appealing on our behalf and on behalf of the little ones in our home, and he answered. Normally, the county doesn't do placements in December um, so that there's a consistent caregiver through Christmas and the holidays. Um, so imagine our surprise when on December 16th, uh, I received a call and asked if we were interested in three little boys uh, all around 11 months old. Of course, we said yes. Uh, what a joy to welcome these new children into our home. All the time we are waiting this year, right? 11 months, that's the whole of 2020. God was working in the background. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, Psalm 69. Uh, and don't worry, I'm not going to read the whole psalm today. Uh, in the beginning, uh, David, in the midst of his pain, says in verses 2 and 3, I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. I'm weary with my crying out. My throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. We were wondering if we would ever get a match, but at an acceptable time, God answered. In verse 13, but as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord, at an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me in your saving faithfulness. God may not answer us right away in our requests, in our pain, and the answer may be to wait. But ultimately, he will answer, not because of anything that we have done or righteousness that we have accomplished on our own, but because of his character. Uh, he is the God who hears, who understands, who sympathizes with us, and we can run to him as our refuge and stronghold. There are so many little details of this story um, that, that just point to how sovereign our God is, and time went elapse me to describe all of them, but here are just a few that, that really helped us to see that only God could have accomplished this. Um, 
That three years of waiting allowed us to build a long-term relationship with our social worker at the county uh, so that when the situation came up, she knew right away our family would be willing uh, to jump into a, a messy, weird uh, situation. Um, the waiting gave time for the older boys to, uh, our older two boys to grow in maturity, uh, and they're really great helpers to our little ones. If COVID had not happened, we actually would never have met these baby boys. Um, I, I would not say in any way that I'm grateful for, for anything that, uh, that the disease has brought, but uh, there's, there's something there to say that, that God, even in the midst of great hardship this year, uh, was working to create this match. Um, and lastly, Christine and I are able to be a cultural mirror for these children who, up to the point that they came into care, uh, only understood Mandarin. Um, there are innumerable parts of these boys' sto story that is interwoven with ours uh, that really point to God's perfect plan and timing, even down to the most minute details. What an amazing, faithful God we have. As we all know, uh, saying yes to some things means saying no to others. Um, so for this reason, I've decided to step out of the elder and training program right now to be able to focus my time and energy at home. Uh, I'm thankful that for the time I was able to serve the body in this way, um, and especially grateful uh, to be able to sit at the feet of these men uh, and learn from them. Uh, going forward, uh, our family will need some more time at home. Uh, these little boys have had uh, a lot of different caregivers, uh, even in the last month, and their trauma history can disrupt their ability to develop a healthy attachment to us and we're not sure what the future impact of that might be on the other areas of their lives. Our prayer is that we can establish a strong foundation for them, especially in these first few months, to help them grow healthy relationships with us, with close family members, and eventually with you, our church family. We want them to know and see that Christine and I love them, that we're here to stay, uh, that we will show them unconditional love, and that we will care for them as God, our Heavenly Father, cares for us. Will we be able to adopt them someday? We're not really sure. Maybe. Um, there are, the process has only just begun. There are a lot of unknowns and uncertainties. Um, and it's been hard answering a lot of questions with I'm not sure and maybe. Unprecedented is a word I used earlier to describe 2020. Um, and, our, and these boys' case is no exception. Uh, we would ask that you pray for us, that we would trust in God and his steadfast love when we're tempted to doubt that we would be intentional in our marriage, holding fast first to Christ and then to each other, um, to continue to build relationship to our two older boys so that they're not forgotten in the midst of a lot of changes that are happening around them, uh, and for attachment of the little ones to us. In the midst of a lot of uncertainty and change, this is what we are sure of, that we will love these boys completely for as long as God has them with us, and that we worship a God who is merciful, gracious, compassionate, and has a perfect plan for us that he will reveal in his timing. To the king of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen.